Hello again. <laughs> 14 years after the series finale of Monk set cable ratings records, everyone's favorite obsessive compulsive detective made a welcome return in the Peacock original movie, Mr. Monk's Last Case. They would be, <laughs> they would be no Blue Skies TV or shows like Psych or Suits without Monk, and they would be no Monk without these two men. Please welcome series creator and the movie's writer, executive producer, Andy Breckman. <laughs> and star, executive producer, four-time Emmy winner, Tony Shalhoub. <laughs> Hi, it, thank you. It's, Feels like we've been talking about a Monk movie since the morning after the finale in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> it's How, all we ever talked about. <laughs> How many pitches and scripts did you go through over the years before we got this incarnation made? Uh, well, uh, when Monk ended, I was, uh, it, you know, it's hard when a, when a, when a series ends. Uh, you still have the momentum, you know, I had the, the adrenaline still pumping and I had... You were hospitalized, weren't you? I was, yeah, exactly. It's, uh, I don't wish it on anyone. But uh, it is kind of emotional when, a, when an eight-year uh, journey like, like we had ends, even though we knew it was ending and we, and we could do a finale on our own terms. Uh, wouldn't you agree, Tony, that it was, it was tough, at least for me? Yeah, it was, bit, well, bittersweet because we really felt, we were very proud of the way we wrapped up the show. The series finale was, you know, uh, well, uh, well received and the ratings were great. We, it was a two-part finale. We felt really uh, good about how the writers wrapped it up. And, um, you know, going out on a high note, but, you know, knowing that we were going to miss each other and miss, you know, visiting those those characters. I could not stop making notes <laughs> and, and coming up with ideas for Monk, even though even though uh, I had been retired, even though I hung my uh, cleats up. So uh, I did have ideas for movies, and I was uh, talking to uh, USA about and, and NBC about them, and uh, but nothing quite uh, worked out timing-wise. Uh, Tony has a life and a career. And, move, and and we all sort of moved well, on. One, one out of two. Yeah, like, <laughs> a life or a career. That's pretty much how it works in our business. And uh, and it took a while. It took a while. And uh, it, the pandemic actually nudged things along for us. Uh, I was going to ask about that, the uh, monk in quarantine, that short, that uh, um, which we've always known that... Uh, that Monk is lovable, but now he became relatable and it became viral. Um, you reunited with the rest of the cast. Was this the push that finally got the movie made? I think it was a big push. Uh, we did a four minute film during, during the lockdown. Uh, Tony and his wife did it alone in their apartment. They were quarantined and uh, we had the, other, the rest of the cast on, uh, on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, there's one line, so I'll, I'll test to uh, Tony. There's one line, uh, one of the most popular lines in the movie, where um, Monk is asked how it is to be working again, and he says... Oh, it's, it's like riding a bike. And then what he says? Uh, then the Dr. Bell says, oh, that's terrific, and then and Monk says, no, I mean it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, so now, going back into character as Monk, was it like riding a bicycle, and was it terrifying? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't terrifying. Um, <laughs> I mean, the initial notion of it was a bit daunting, but then Andy just came up with this great script, and we, uh, you know, we had all the, uh, all the positive energy from the people at Peacock, and we had uh, everybody, the cast, the uh, original, um, you know, series regulars, everybody was excited to revisit and we went into the casting process and found what we felt were the perfect uh, guest uh, group of guest cast and um, so by the time we actually you know got to shooting on the first day we were uh, revved up and and uh, didn't take long to fall right back into it 
Okay, we'll see how that uh, that happened. Now we'll uh, watch the scene that introduces Monk in uh, present day. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. We hired you to write about your career as a police detective. You solved 140 homicides. That's the story we paid for. Not this. Oh, here in chapter four, you have two paragraphs about the suspect and seven, eight, nine pages about his vacuum cleaner. We have the same vacuum cleaner, the exact same model. What are the odds of that? One in six? Terrence. Maybe I need an editor. You've had five editors and two ghostwriters. They all quit. The last one changed his name and moved to Guam. I've talked to the lawyers. You're illegally in breach. We need our advance back. Advance me? You mean the money? It's not my decision. I'm sorry, Adrian. No, 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 no. No, Beth, you can't do that. Here's the thing. Molly's getting married in six weeks. Molly? Trudy's daughter. I, I didn't even know about her until 12 years ago. It's all in the book. I mean, it will be in volume two. Is there something wrong with the chair? It's not plumb with Terry's. It should be plumb. Maybe you, you could lower yours. Why? To make it plumb. You'll thank me later. Oh, no, please don't. You got to pull up on the I lever. I could. Uh, maybe I'll just stand. Maybe we should all stand. But the woman, the woman playing uh, Monk's uh, nemesis slash uh, publisher is uh, is the lovely Brooke Adams, who was also Tony's wife. So. So the tension between them that was not. Fa that, yeah, uh, <laughs> no acting involved. <laughs> Being, being reprimanded by my, by that <laughs> yeah. yeah, she passed that audition. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this clearly is like, this is classic um, physical uh, comedy bit from Monk um, and what we know. But now, like literally a couple of minutes later, uh, Monk was on the verge of suicide. Talk about, uh, also this is very relatable, um, the pandemic had a lot of people struggle with their mental health, but um, talk about going darker in the movie and balancing um, that with, uh, with the, uh, all the hijinks that fans are expecting from, from a movie, a monk movie? Well, no one else, no one else I know of can do it uh, like this guy can do that. That's what you're talking about is threading a needle, you know, uh, as far as acting goes. He, even in that scene, he was doing two or three different things. He was, he was pleading for his life. He was, he was being given horrible news, and he was annoying this poor assistant next to him trying to adjust chairs. And, and then we added, in the next scene, we added uh, that he was uh, thinking about uh, jumping out a window, and, uh, and Tony makes it all relatable, and uh, you never lose your compassion for the guy. It, it's, it's just amazing to watch. Uh, to watch I think, him do a, it. Thank you. I think it's a tribute, though, to the writing. And Andy. Uh, Everyone hear what he just said? A tribute <laughs> to the writing. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, it bears repeating. Um, <laughs> it's a tribute to the writing. Andy uh, first presented this idea, um, that, uh, this dark, dark place that Monk was in when he was pitching it to us. And, <clears throat> you know, at first it sounded kind of risky. Um, but then again, you know, we, we all agreed, too, that we wanted to do something different. We wanted to raise the stakes. We did not want to just come back with episode 126. We wanted to, this to be more, uh, more special. We wanted it to be kind of an event, the story. And we wanted it, the scale to be larger and the stakes to be higher. Hmm. So How uh, high? Did you did you ever consider killing Monk off? Oh Lord! Oh my oh, God! Oh Lord, no! <laughs> Monk is—I can only speak for myself. Monk is my retirement plan. <laughs> 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 I'm not. I'm not. I make a. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but that's one I will never make. <laughs> that's that is job security right there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but in terms, of you did you want to say more about the? going into the dark place and what you have to pull from well yeah i uh, i mean this is really what what the whole thing what the whole 
movie hangs on is this um, this idea that uh, Monk is basically he's 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 giving up. He's his work. He doesn't really work that much. The work work was always his one thing that could get him out of the house. His his lifeline really. And lately, he just hasn't had that. And all of the people in his circle, his close uh, com compatriots, they've all kind of gone off into their lives. And he, he, you know, Molly is there, but but it's just he's in a dark hole. <clears throat> and so, but when Andy pitched this, I can say this right about your of course, of course. Uh, Andy pitched this as um, you know because we had questions about the the suicidal tendencies. Um, the, you know, he he invoked the uh, the movie "It's a Wonderful Life," <laughs> which is a very you know heartwarming uh, you know American classic, uh, a life affirming story. Uh, the premise of which is that a man is going to kill himself. So so the, uh, being the thief that he is, <laughs> Andy. No, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, it's, it's true. We all uh, ball, steal, ball steal, steal. always steal from the best. Yeah. Frank Capra, right? Well, any any writers out there, yeah, might yeah might do well to just steal from Frank Capra. <laughs> it's always a good idea. So so when he when he framed it in those terms, it it just made complete sense because we knew ultimately that we were going to end up in a in a place of uh, positivity and hope. So is this where the ghosts came from? Because um, in the end, it's the ghost of Trudy, a monk's wife, who is. Of, uh, make helping him overcome those uh, suicidal urges, along with the ghosts of all the victims whose murders he solved, plus some that are hoping he would. Um, talk about how how is it walking through that field with all those um, victims, like like monks' like greatest achievement. Well, I can just tell you just before before Tony answers, when I when I wrote the scene, I I got choked up and and and, and teared up, and then when I witnessed Tony and and uh, the cast uh, performing it, I got choked up again. So it worked for at least one guy, the, the writer. <laughs> uh, but how did you feel in that field? Well, I felt it was quite, uh, it, was, it was amazing and, and, and moving, uh, of course. But mostly I was super grateful to, uh, you know, Peacock and NBC because, uh, you know, on the page, that was a really, really uh, difficult thing to kind of uh, picture and imagine because, you know, Monk typically, when we did the series, we were kind of working on a bit of a lower, bud lower budget compared to, compared to a lot of, uh, you know, procedural shows. I mean, we were basic cable and, you know, it was, it was it, we managed to do well with what we had, but we it was We had two car chases in eight years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could. Um, you know, I, uh, but that was good be for us because we we wanted one of the one of the things that we always fought for. I always fought for was I wanted the show to be low tech mm -hmm. when we were doing the series. But but then when we read the script and we realized, wow, this is going. This has to be a big scene. It has to be a big place. It has to involve a number of different cameras. It has to involve a lot of background people, and that's costly. And and um, so all that was factored in. The, the network, uh, they just really supported us and stepped up and were willing to, to uh, you know, spend what was needed to make that work on a, on a filmic, cinematic level. It was pitch perfect. And I, I don't want to leave without mentioning Randy Zisk, right. who just, kill, just killed that scene. Just, just our director. director our co director. Co-producer, director. Yeah. Also, director on the on the series, yeah. Um. Yeah, he's been our he's been our our partner uh, along with David Hoberman from the beginning. And it took 14 years and epidemic <laughs> to get Mr. Monk's last case made. Um, and yet we look younger. Isn't that <laughs> weird? Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, well, so how does that work? Well, this guy does. What will it take for us to get Mr. Monk's very last case. <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> this, the really no kidding yeah, this yeah, time, no, the real yeah. last. No kidding, this one really is the last case. Um, we are uh, we are hopeful, and uh, uh, you know, if, if the fates allow, uh, by fates I mean uh, the, got the suits <laughs> at, at, uh, Peacock. at at Peacock. Uh, you know, we we'd love to uh, we'd love to explore another another uh, chapter. Uh, so, <laughs> what about? We're, we'll do. We're doing our best for you. 
What about Tony? Can you uh, go back and revisit the character? No freaking way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. I, I, I mean, I would never, we don't know that that's a possibility, really. Um, um, but I, I would not want to close that door. Uh, I, I was, I'd like to stay open to the idea that, you know, maybe there's something else down the pike. Please do, because I speak for everyone. We really want to see how Monk starts picking up dog poop when he... <laughs> When he now walks That's his life right. up, <laughs> we left we left Monk with a with a with a uh, with a beautiful dog. We can't we can't say goodbye. <laughs> for for everyone's sake, again we have Andy Breckman and Tony Shalhoub, Mr. Monk's last case. <laughs>